Hello you lovely people and welcome. In this video we'll be taking a look at the DC Designs F15 Charlie and Delta um, Autopilot, Navigation and ILS. I'll be performing a demo in the Charlie um, so it would be pretty much the same as the Delta just this one obviously has the single seat. So uh, with that sorted uh, let's jump in and um, start taking a look okay let's take a look at the autopilot so um, to start off with let's come down to the left hand side we have a little panel here we've got some switches we've got autopilot master on off altitude hold on off heading hold on off indicated airspeed hold on off approach hold on off and nav hold on off um, you can get a quick solution um, by flicking the switches so at the moment we're at 9200 we want to hold that so autopilot, autopilot master on altitude hold our aircraft will now hold at the altitude it was set at and we can also hit the indicated airspeed hold and that will now hold 254 knots and like I say this is a good solution for instant action um, we can also put the heading hold on uh, where's the heading bug uh, if we move the heading bug here the little arrow wherever we point that to it will turn to simple as that um, now let's close these off um, keep the airspeed one on take off the heading hold leave altitude hold and autopilot on and we'll come across here we've got a little digital display and if we hit the menu you'll see that we have an autopilot uh, selector there and on this one we have autopilot master on off which is basically this switch here flight director active altitude hold on which is over this side um, but we can change the value of the altitude hold by punching in numbers here um, we've got heading hold on and off which again is this switch here but we can change what type of um, heading hold we have we can change that to selected or man um, down here we've got all weather landing system which will work in conjunction with the approach hold here um, nav mode so if we are using a flight plan we'd use GPS but we can switch over to VOR so that we can just hit in our frequencies and the nav mode will follow uh, the VORs and then last but not least we have auto throttle at the bottom auto throttle uh, on off which is the same as this switch here uh, but we can change actually change the value in here by hitting some numbers here so let's just change the speed so we're at 254 I'm going to change that to 350 knots um, we get our target airspeed here and as you can see the aircraft is speeding up let's change the altitude at the moment we are at 9100 feet let's change that to 12,000 so we enter 12,000 here as you can see there is an enter switch but um, that uh, isn't used in this part of the um, the uh, data panel here so all we have to do is just hit on the value and as you can see 12,000 we'll start climbing to 12,000 feet now okay so um, that's pretty much the autopilot in a nutshell and um, yeah we are at our, pretty much at our target speed and we're not far off our target altitude uh, and that is using pretty much every single switch there by the approach hold or the nav hold uh, but those will be used in conjunction with other parts of the autopilot and for that I need to be doing navigation so that said let's move on to uh, the next portion of the video which is navigation 
Okay, so we're going to take a look at ADF, uh, the most simplistic form of um, getting to anywhere on the simulator. Um, I say simplest, the most simplest, because it doesn't give you any um, information up on the HUD on any of the screens, it just gives you a bearing. No distance measuring, anything like that. And back in the old days, in say something like a chipmunk, you'd ha all you would have is an ADF um, gauge that would point you into the direction that you needed to go. So, <clears throat> if you're going to use ADF, you need to make sure that the frequency you've got is definitely for that station. Otherwise, you're not going to get to where you want to go. So, always write down your frequencies. So, ADF come down to the right hand side here you'll see that we have an ADF um, input there now we can change the frequency using these buttons button uh, the enter key does a decimal um, so that you can add the decimal in between now I know Cranwell is around here somewhere so I am going to uh, put in the Cranwell frequency in a second in this screen you'll see that we have the bearing compass and the only difference we'll see once the ADF is, has been put input and is working is a circle that will travel around the outside of the, the bearing compass um, and that will be where we need to head to so uh, let's get Cranwell tuned in so 4, 2, 3, decimal, 0, 0, 0 into ADF, we look over on the screen here, we have that circle that I was talking about. Now, just going to put heading hold on, and we are now going to turn onto that circle. slightly over because I know that it will creep over the top of it and like I say no information on the HUD no other information on the screen just the circle in fact we might be able to see Cranwell now um, that I think could be Barkston Heath Yep, that's Barks and Heath there, and that's Cranwell here. So there you go. Uh, nice and easy. Um, like I say, the only downside to it is there's no distance measuring, so you don't know how far you are from it. If you're lost and you lose all your navigational um, aids, then... Uh, ADF um, get, will get you there uh, unfortunately there's not a steam gauge for the ADF so my guess would be that if all your uh, navigational information was to be lost off the screen you wouldn't be able to put in ADF anyway but ADF is a good form of navigation um, like I say I've used it on the chipmunk and it always gets me to where I need to go so there it is Royal Air Force Cranwell Let's go on to the next section, VOR. Okay, so VORs. There are two ways of uh, inputting VOR frequencies. One is into the actual nav radio here, or down to the right hand side here, if we get into our uh, radio nav section. Uh, we have nav 1 and nav 2, and you can input frequencies here. Uh, basically, nav 1 here is exactly the same as that. So the first frequency I'm going to put in, um, I will input here. The second one I'll input here, just to show you them in action. So first VOR that we're going to go to um, is going to be Gamston. So we want input frequency 112, enter is decimal, remember, and then uh, 800. So 800, nav 1. As you can see, we now have a course deviation indicator, 
and we can set our course using the course set to get the arrow where it needs to be once we have a complete arrow that is the um, the exact course that we need to be on so if we move the course arrow here as you can see it slides about okay so let's set that to there turn the heading bug onto that and I'm going to hit heading hold and again turn that it's going to be slightly off If we look over here on our screen, uh, it will give us a course to go on and track. Three, four, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. If we set the course deviation there, okay, it's slightly off on here compared to what's on the screen. So I would use this screen as the indicator, okay, course 346, tracking 346. So Gamston is dead on the nose and if we hit our nav button here we will get all our nav information up here so uh, we've got nav 1 radio nav 1 Gamston is tuned in gives us our bearing and we are 21.1 nautical miles away from the uh, VOR so what I'm going to do just going to speed up the aircraft a little bit 350 into there, uh, get this back onto radio nav. Okay, so what I'm going to do once uh, once we've hit Gamston, I'm going to put the Ottringham um, VOR in, and just to show you um, how to, uh, pretty simple how to do that, and show you turning onto that, and that will uh, conclude the VOR uh, portion of the navigation and autopilot <coughs> excuse me Okay, so we're less than five nautical miles away from Gamston now. Uh, we can start prepping for Ottringham. So if we change our frequency to 113.900, now you can see everything changes. Um, and we have, where is Gamston? Gamston is just in front. Uh, we can now uh, turn our course on to Ottringham okay again hit nav get all our information up on the HUD We need to be tracking on five zero five two. Five three. Possibly five four by the time we get there. There we go. 
So we're now going to be tracking on 054, passing the power stations. There's Lincoln Cathedral out there in the distance. Okay, so that's VOR. Very simple, uh, using the frequencies, just making sure that you um, rotate the coarse needle um, and get the CDI into the center of the arrow, turn your heading on and then hit nav, uh, you'll get all your information up on the HUD or you can just hit nav and use the heading, uh, the nav hold and that should take you, as long as it's in um, in VOR mode it will take you to that VOR. But, uh, yeah, Ottringham, 30 nautical, 30 nautical miles away on bearing 053 and 154, so just change that again. And that's it. Um, as I say, in previous videos I've always used it, Lincolnshire for VOR navigation and tra uh, navigation exercises. Um, I think it's one of the best areas um, in the UK for that. Plenty of VORs about, plenty of TACANs, plenty of um, uh, VFR um, like you just saw, we just went past the power stations, plenty of VFR uh, plot points and things like that. So, with VOR done, we can now move over to TACAN. Right, okay, so let's take a look at TACAN. Now, uh, TACAN or tactical air navigation is mainly used by the military, uh, has a very high f high frequency range and um, then VORs, so you can uh, track onto those TACANs from quite a distance. Um, so I'm going to use two TACANs today, I'm going to use Waddington and Coningsby, my regulars. Um, so we'll track onto Waddington and then onto Coningsby. Uh, to do that, we need obviously need the uh, TACAN code, and this will be our friend here. As you can see, we've got TACAN mode. We've got it in X-ray or Yankee. X-ray is the main one used. Uh, Yankee sometimes by air-to-air -air refuelers or uh, naval um, ships. Uh, we can activate the TACAN here. We can switch the TACAN to transmit, receive, and also just receive if we don't want to be sending out a signal. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, put in uh, our Waddington TACAN channel, which is 118X-ray. And then we want to turn our TACAN on. And if we come over to our screen here, you can see we've got an arrow. You can't move. You can't move the uh, course arrow. It is pointing directly where it needs to go. And then if we hit TACAN here, we'll get our information up on the HUD. So the bearing we need to go to, and also the distance. So we're flying away from it at the moment, but we uh, will remedy remedy that in a sec. So um, I'm going to. Um, hit heading hold and we are going to go and turn on to 339 it will change before I get there guarantee it Okay, so bearing 338. I'm going to speed the aircraft up. Menu. Autopilot. And 350 knots. Now change to 334. Three, three, 
possibly 330 so we, I'll track 330 that should change by the time we get there it will round off to the nearest number that dips below 335 okay so we're on 330 heading straight towards uh, RF Waddington uh, we're currently 25 nautical miles out um, once we get there or once we get around about 5 nautical miles out I will um, change the TACAN over to uh, RAF Coningsby so as you can see um, our uh, compass, bearing compass and well that's it's quite a way off it I mean it's off it's really off I mean we're supposed to be heading on that triangle and that is telling me that the direction of the TACAN is in that direction which is wrong so ignore this it doesn't give you any DME either um, so this will be your main uh, port of call although it would be nice to have the traditional gauge here uh, up and running properly um, we'll keep using this Okay, so we've got RF Wellington come out on the nose now, getting close to five nautical miles. Okay, going to change the tack and frequency now to 48 X ray. And you can see we need to be pointing in the other direction so we're going to get information up on the screen and we turn to our right go over the top of Waddington just miss it Again, it's telling us what course we need to be on. 
I'm slightly off. And there's RAF Coningsby. Now you can use the TACAN um, as a, an ILS um, as well, but not very many airfields have it. Um, Coningsby certainly doesn't. Um, but yeah, that's another way of approaching an airfield. Um, don't know much about that actually, I'll have to look at, delve into that a bit deeper. But ILST. Um, is uh, used in conjunction with TACAN uh, to get uh, a localizer type thing. Right, so that's TACAN, very easy. Uh, put your code in, turn your uh, heading bug or turn manually onto where you want to go or where it's telling you to point to, and fly it. Easy as that. Point and click. Um, so yeah, uh, now TACAN is sorted, we can now look at um, flying a flight plan and using um, the autopilot to fly the whole thing for you. Okay, so let's take a look at flight plan and waypoints. So I've got the flight plan in front of me, uh, waypoint 0 is just ahead, waypoint 1, whole beach range, waypoint 2, Hun Stanton on the West Norfolk coast, Waypoint 3, out into the North Sea. Uh, waypoint 4, uh, turning left uh, in a westerly direction towards Coningsby. And then there's a 5, uh, which will bring us in line with the runway. And then, obviously, the last part of that will be uh, RAF Coningsby. But I won't be doing the ILS landing in this, in this portion. Um, so flying the uh, flight plan. If we hit our waypoint button there you can see that we have our information up here telling us where waypoint zero uh, bearing and distance. Uh, we can flick through the waypoints at any time and uh, we can fly to those if we feel like we want to. Auto mode will fly the whole flight plan, uh, bearing in mind that when it makes the turn between waypoints it does it at 5 nautical miles out, so it doesn't fly the line directly, it will make its own little deviations. If you're flying manually or um, flying through the waypoints manually and you feel like you want to break and let the computer do the rest of it, you can hit auto but just beware if you do um, it will reset the whole flight um, you'll end up going back to waypoint zero so you need to make sure that you're on the ball and make sure that you select um, the waypoint in auto mode uh, that you were going to otherwise you will be flying back to where you started now going to um, start the flight uh, I'm going to be doing it in auto mode just making sure that the nav mode is in GPS so that when L nav switch is switched on it will follow the flight plan and not on VORs. So with that let's get out of active pause. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the auto button. And you can see, as we are already uh, within 5 nautical miles, it's automatically switched to waypoint 1. So, um, we're going to be going directly there.
Okay, so we're over whole beach range. Um, good bit of scenery if you own the PC version. Um, it has some shipwrecks, um, bombing circle, and strafing targets down there, and a range tower. So off to Hunt Stanton. I'm not sure why LNAV switched itself off there. Strange. So when we switch over to waypoint 3, once it gets to um, 5 nautical miles, it should make the turn if LNAV doesn't kick out again. on Hun Stanton just ahead of us and it should make the turn in five four three two one turn and there we go it behaved itself this time and as you can see it doesn't follow the flight plan it's made its own deviation decided to go off on its own tangent so just be wary um, if you're flying in auto mode. Okay, so we're making the turn on the waypoint four in three, two, one, go. One of those up ghastly North Sea wind farms. Okay, we're making our last turn towards Coningsby. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, you can still change your waypoints in auto mode um, if you want to cut any of the flight out. Um, yeah, you can also take the sequence off. Oh good, I mean it got us from Hull Beach to Coningsby. Um, the auto mode's good for long distance if you don't fancy being at the seat the whole time. Um, but auto seems to be a better way of um, doing it if you uh, want to hit the waypoints properly. Okay, so that's uh, Flight plan waypoints. Last bit will be ILS. Right, so ILS. Um, as you can see, I'm over the North Sea again, and my 
airfield of choice is RF Coningsby. I know F15 you'd think Lake and Heath, but Lake and Heath has an ILS issue, um, either the stock or custom. Um, when you come in, the ILS on 24 is to the left hand side, so you end up coming on on grass. That's not good if you're coming in on bad weather and you need to get down on the runway. Whereas I know the ILS system at Coningsby works um, when you're on the glide slope it brings you bang center line so um, that is my airfield of choice uh, so let's get set up there are a sequence of events that you need to go through um, just be uh, wary that there is a bug a known bug that sometimes kicks in it's uh, random uh, we believe it's the sim not the aircraft so um, I'll show you how to um, overcome that if it happens um, I'll also tell you if it doesn't happen so at the moment I have got the aircraft um, set up at holding 3,000 feet 300 knots and um, we are tracking in a northerly direction so what I'm going to do is I'm going to input the um, ILS frequency for Coningsby um, which is 111.150 one, one, one um, now you can either input that through here which I'm going to do now or you can come into the radio nav page as you can see it's already in but you can do it digi dig digitally if you, if you so wish so back to autopilot uh, so I've got altitude hold, I've got speed hold and master on now I'll get the aircraft going and obviously I'll describe the process as we go along as you can see the air, uh, the ILS is running in a, a 252 so I guess that's a runway 25 and um, the deviation indicator here is uh, a kind of a localizer so the more center line we are the more complete the arrow becomes so we want to sort of get that pointed at our nine o'clock and we will wait for the indicator to start tracking towards towards me and then we'll make a left hand turn as you can see we've got D070T uh, waypoint coming up or uh, nav marker uh, and it's usually in line with that as you can see it's tracking in now so we will start turning in don't want to overshoot but that's what I've done Right, we can remedy that now. Level out. As you can see, we've got the lights of Coningsby there. I'm trying, going to try and not use that as my uh, way of bringing the aircraft in. I'm going to slow the aircraft down to 200 knots. Just feel more comfortable with the aircraft like that. Move over shot again too busy doing other things so once we get below two, uh, 250 knots we we'll bring the gear down in the flaps gear down flaps down hit the ILSN button now got our information up on the HUD just make sure that we are locked in so now we have our localizer information here with the bar here uh, the closer to the center it gets obviously the more center line we are and we are way below glide slope at the moment once we get to 10 nautical miles um, I'll hand it over to the um, 
approach. Let's make sure that everything where it should be. Okay, so we're at 10 nautical miles, so we want Autopilot Master on, which it already is, all weather landing system, and we're going to hit approach. the altitude hold off okay I think the bug might be causing problems there there we go so that was the bug that I was telling you about. It will turn. It won't turn on to uh, localizer. It won't go with the glide slope. It won't do anything. Um, so the way to do that, uh, to remedy it, make sure that you're a decent distance away from the airfield as well, uh, is to flick the approach hold off and stick it back on again. Now we seem to have a really nasty side wind going on here okay. this is a bit I really hate always high alpha and you can't see what the hell is going on Yeah, we've got a side wind coming on. So hopefully the aircraft will handle this okay. Uh, once it gets to a certain point near the the uh, threshold of the runway, the autopilot cuts off and will hand itself over to you in um, manual mode. So you need to be ready for that. Otherwise, it will be a heavy landing. And if you see my Strike Eagle video, you will see what I mean. Certainly wrestling with the elements at the moment. and get ready for the handover unfortunately you can't see it on the Charlie or Delta variant because the panel is down to your right okay oh whoa 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 that is a nasty side wind right okay so well that's ILS pretty simple if you have the issue with the um, approach again just flick the approach hold off switch it back on again and it should resolve itself um, yeah so that's uh, that's come to the end of the video if you've got this far thank you very much um, and 
appreciate all you guys that support me. And uh, as always, take care, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.